So this should be the final video for lithium iron phosphate longevity. Yesterday, people were commenting saying, is 0% state of charge zero volts? And then they asked, what is 100% state of charge? What voltage is that? And how do you effectively balance these batteries? And I never covered that. And it's actually a really cool discussion. And balancing some batteries, especially budget batteries, can be quite difficult. It can take weeks. So in this video, I'm gonna cover my voltage recommendations, what you should set your absorption and your float to. And I'll cover the voltage that you should charge to if you're capacity testing individual cells. Also, depending on what type of BMS you have, it will change how you balance the battery. If you have closed loop communication and it can manage the charge current while it's balancing, it will actually balance faster compared to some cheap 12 volt budget battery that you have to leave on a power supply for a couple days or weeks for those cells to actually balance. So first, let's talk about what 100% is and what 0% is. I had comments last night where people thought that I was saying that 0% means zero volts. That is absolutely false. Now in most BMSs, it will have a high voltage disconnect and a low voltage disconnect. Usually the high voltage disconnect is set to 3.65 volts and the low voltage disconnect is 2.5 volts. Some BMSs are different, but that's typically what you're gonna get. And with those voltages, you should get the full capacity for your cell. Now typically when you charge all the cells up, one of the cells will hit high voltage disconnect and it will disconnect the chargers. And then the voltage of the highest voltage cell will slow slowly settle. It will go from 3.65 volts down to about 3.32 and then it will reconnect the chargers and it will try to charge again and during that time of charging it is balancing it. So the highest voltage cell is going to be connected to a resistor and it's going to discharge that individual cell until it matches the other cells. Now just because you have your absorption set to 14.5 volts for a 12 volt battery for example does not mean that it's fully charged when you hit 14.5 volts. The other cells can still be lagging behind especially in a solar system that's not charged to 100% that often or for very long. It will keep trying to balance and if you keep trying to charge it, it will balance over time. But sometimes this can take a long time, especially for cheap 12 volt batteries. Sometimes it can take a few weeks of cycling, but you'll notice that over time it will get more and more balanced. Now this is not true for like a power pro battery with closed loop communication. In those systems, once it knows that it's at a higher state of charge, it will reduce the charge current so that it doesn't doesn't hit that high voltage disconnect and it will balance and it will keep balancing non-stop in those systems it knows what the battery needs and it will supply it and that's also the same for server rack batteries with those batteries typically charged to 100% and you'll watch it be stuck at 99% and then it will hit 100% once the voltages of all the cells go up and they're actually at 100% imbalanced and then you're done but with cheaper batteries you need to keep cycling it to 100% it can be quite difficult sometimes if you don't want to wait or if you're 14 0.5 volt charger keeps hitting that high voltage disconnect and you're waiting for it to cycle itself and balance slowly over time, you can use one of these. And you can watch the current slowly drop as you get to a higher and higher state of charge. But if you get a disconnect, then the balancing is not occurring. So what you can do with this is you can lower the current down to whatever the balanced current is. And it will slowly rise the voltage to 14.5 and then you'll get a disconnect. When I do my capacity test, I use this so I know exactly Exactly what the state of charge really is. I can see exactly how much current is going in there. Typically it will drop pretty quickly and then you'll see the balance current and then you'll get the high voltage disconnect. But this allows me to control it. If I'm at 14.2 volts and I hit high voltage disconnect, that means that I need to balance the cells. The cells are matched nicely and I hit 14.5 volts and then it just cuts off, then I know that it's a higher quality pack and they actually match the cells properly. Also realize that if you have a bad cell, no amount of balancing is going to fix that. Even if you have an active balancer, and I tested this years ago, even with a high balance current, it's not going to keep up with the cycling. So again, you need to start with good cells that are matched in a good BMS, charge to 100% so they're actually balanced, and then you are good to go. Now something I didn't mention in my past videos is current sharing. Let's say you have 10 12 volt batteries connected in parallel, and let's say you don't have a bus bar with equal length conductors going to each battery. What's going to happen is some of the batteries are gonna charge and balance before the other ones will. And this happens a lot. People buy cheap, small 12 volt batteries, and they put tons of them together in parallel, and then they use it 
it in a solar system and they're not charging to 100%. If you charge to 100%, like 14.5 volts for a 12 volt battery, and you hold it there or you cycle there every single day, eventually they'll all be balanced. So for most people in that situation, you wanna charge to 100% once a day if you can, so that you can balance all of those packs. Now you can check this with a voltmeter. Check the voltage of all of your batteries when you're at 100%. If two of them are at 14.5 volts and the rest are at 13.3 volts, you have a problem. You either need to rewire that system or you need to do more balance cycles and hit a higher voltage. Once they're all at 14.5 volts, then you know that you're actually balanced. Now, once your batteries are balanced, they will not go out of balance for a very long time, actually. I deleted most of my videos, but I used to run these cells without a BMS, and I actually would bottom balance it. And the cell drift over time, the voltage differential was not that bad. Sometimes I could last six months until I had to balance again. But it depends on how you use it. If you have high C rate charge or discharge rates, or if one side of your battery bank is colder than the other side, or one side's hotter than the other side is a better way to put it, you can get more cell drift over time. And if it's winter and you're not charging to 100% because you don't have that much solar, you're not balancing those cells. So I just tell people now, charge to 100%. You need to balance the cells. People will have such a severe imbalance that they're not pulling full capacity. Now over time, that will affect your battery. Now when it comes to the cycling degradation, it's not that bad. I want people to read the studies on calendar aging and the rates of degradation over time. Because whether you cycle the battery or you don't cycle the battery, you're still getting degradation. And for solar specifically, you wanna use that battery as much as you can today. So it's best to aim to charge to 100% no matter what. Even if you're not, I want you guys to try because you need to balance your packs. And then don't be scared to go to 0% use the battery that capacity is there today now a lot of you guys don't need to buy this you can just charge to 100 percent and your cells will be balanced but keep in mind the current sharing and everything else it's a problem you need to charge these things often to get a good balance especially if you have cheap batteries with mismatched cells and again if you have a bad cell no amount of balancing is going to fix that you're going to have reduced capacity reduced performance and the other cells will be affected now zero percent state of charge depends on what type of BMS you're using. Typically, you're gonna get a low voltage disconnect at 2.5 volts. But if you're pulling full capacity and your cells are above that voltage, you can call that 0%. What matters most is what is 100%. That's why BMSs are programmed to reset their 100% state of charge meter with their coulomb meter that's built in, the shunt, when the cells in the pack reach a certain voltage. Now for solar systems specifically, you need backup power. If you have no backup capacity and you have one rainy day and your whole system shuts down, then you are not using your battery. Some people are trying to discharge to 20% because they want their battery to last a very long time. And honestly, with that lower voltage, if you're not going below 2.5 volts per cell, especially if you're not holding there for a long time and you're just cycling it daily, it is fine to do that. And it's fine to go to 0% state of charge. And again, that is not zero volts. It's 2.5 volts per cell. Now, some comments made a very good point. They said, what about uninterruptible power supplies for backup? If the grid were down, if I have no solar power system, I'm not cycling every day and I'm just using this battery for backup. In most recommendations, recommendations and also my recommendation is 50% state of charge for storage but you need to use these batteries so what are you going to do are you going to charge to 90% how bad is the imbalancing over time and technically you could charge to a lower state of charge but this is a backup battery you need to use it if the grid goes down you need as much energy as possible and the degradation at high states of charge at lower temperatures is not that bad I actually posted that study in the last video and I've also mentioned this in a lot of past videos if you want to watch those as well and so for me I would keep that thing at 100% I would make sure the cells were balanced and I would hold it there you will get more degradation but like I keep saying it's not that bad unless you keep it in a hot environment and in all the studies it says the same thing avoid hot temperatures batteries don't like that if you're in a cool environment and you're cycling it slowly or you have it as backup system that battery is not getting hot 
Now, all of these recommendations change if we're not using lithium iron phosphate. Now, something I've noticed over time is what are people actually doing with these batteries and what actually kills them? And typically, like I said, people put them into storage, they will be at a low state of charge and they let them sit for like two years. And then it drops itself below zero and then you have permanent damage. Next, I've seen people have massive imbalances on their battery, especially with cheap batteries and especially with 12 volt batteries and with current sharing problems with how they're wiring them up. So for all of these instances, the best thing to tell people is just charge the freaking thing to 100%. They're not even at 100% for very long with the solar system every single day anyways. And it can take weeks, sometimes months to properly balance that thing. And during winter, they're probably not balancing it at all really. So charging to 100% and not being scared of 0% will give you the best bang for your buck and your batteries will not die. The only way I've been able to kill one of these batteries is over discharging it from storage. Everything else is a joke. The degradation from cycling alone with solar at this C rate is very minimal, especially at high temperatures. If you have a hot ambient temperature environment, the rate of degradation will actually be noticeable. All the other degradation factors are really not very noticeable at all for most of you. And if you don't believe me, do a capacity test of your system and pan it out over 20 years. Also, the initial degradation can be extreme for the first couple years, even though it's not not even that bad at all and you'll probably still pull full capacity but typically it will flatline and like i've said before even if you're at 80 or 70 percent capacity in 20 or 30 years you can still safely use the battery but you want to keep them balanced so that they age at the same rate you want all the cells to be stressed with the same amount of voltage the same amount of cycling at the same state of charge in the same temperature if you have a large battery bank and one side is next to a heat source or one side is next to freezing cold temperatures and like a cold concrete wall the aging will not be the same across your whole battery you want to cycle them together at the same temperature same state of charge same balance everything also so think about how much money you're spending on these batteries and how much capacity you're losing if you're modifying your cycling thresholds. If electricity is expensive and you're limiting your capacity today for hopes of having a higher cycle life to 80% degradation in the future, typically the math absolutely does not work out. Typically you're better off using the battery as much as possible today, especially if it's saving on your electric bill. And you can calculate that payback period. Now what my video want to show people is some general guidelines that everybody can follow so your battery works for a very long time. I look at the forum, I see the problems people have, I see how people destroy their batteries, and I see how I destroyed my batteries. And then I consider the C rate that we're charging and discharging at, and that if you're using it for solar, you're hanging around 50% state of charge. But people are not charging their batteries enough, first because they're scared to, and they see, oh, I'm gonna get increased degradation but it's not that bad and your system's not at 100% for long enough for it to matter, for you to even notice, to have a statistically significant data point to even notice. And these battery cells are not being tested to 15 or 20 years. What they're doing is they're cycling it quickly in the laboratory at a 1C rate. When you are using solar, it's 0.1, maybe 0.2C at most. And if it's above that, that means you did not size your system properly. That means you have zero backup power for a rainy day. That means that whatever you have for that day, let's say you charge up in five hours at a 0.2C rate, and that was from zero. That means that your battery is too small. That means that if you're going all the way to zero every single night and you're charging up in five hours, your battery is too small for your solar system. In this situation, if you get one cloudy day, you're not gonna have power for the whole day. That just does not make sense. Typically, these batteries are cycled at 0.1C, and with that rate, there's not that much heat generation. So the degradation from cycling is very minimal. Typically, the calendar aging is gonna degrade the battery faster, especially at higher temperatures, especially in the tropics or in the desert, and your battery's exposed to high temperatures, that's gonna degrade it before the cycling will both degrade it and other things degrade it but you have to look at the rate of degradation here 
Now to end this video, I'm gonna show you what my voltage recommendations are for different voltage batteries. So first off, for a 12 volt 4S configuration, lithium iron phosphate battery, you wanna set the absorption of your solar charge controller to 14.5 volts. The float should be 13.6 volts. And then the inverter cutoff, where your inverter will turn off and disconnect loads before the BMS shuts down, if you don't have closed loop communication, should be 10.7 volts to 12 volts. And the BMS disconnect voltage is gonna be 10 volts, that's 2.5 volts per cell. You have four cells at 2.5 volts, that's 10 volts. But the inverter cutoff needs to be slightly higher than that. Unless you have closed loop communication, then it will know exactly what 0% is and you can disconnect it down there. And I would set it to 0%. If you can't do it down there and the BMS gets all crazy, set it to 1%. But if you don't have that and you're running large loads and you have a massive voltage drop and you have current balancing issues, you have to mess with these numbers a little bit. If you sized your battery properly, you shouldn't have any issue dropping it down to like 10.2 or 10.7, it should be fine. If your loads are small, you can set that thing to like 10.2 volts and it will disconnect before the BMS does, but you need to test it with your loads. Now for 24 volts, absorption 29 volts, float 27.2, and the inverter cutoff 21.4 to 24 volts. Now for a 48 volt battery, the absorption should be set to 58 volts, and the float should be set to 54.4 volts, and the inverter cutoff 42.8 to 48 volts. 48 volts is very conservative, but for some of you guys that works. That's like five to maybe 7% state of charge. Especially in a large system with lots of parallel batteries with different types of BMSs. Sometimes most of the batteries are okay, and then it trips only one of the batteries something else I forgot to mention is sometimes one battery will disconnect from the pack and you won't even know it this is rare but if you set it to 48 volts for your disconnect you're not going to trigger any BMS's and sometimes there's really weird BMS's and they programmed it very strangely you've seen that a lot on this channel but don't be scared to go to 42.8 or even 40 volts. If you have closed loop communication, that's totally fine. If you have a solar system, the next day it's going to charge itself back up and you're not gonna be hanging around low state of charge for very long. The only time you're gonna be doing that is during winter. Now, if you're charging up an individual cell to 100%, I've always recommended 3.625 volts. And then the low voltage disconnect is 2.5 volts. If you're doing a test with like a CBA4 and you're not using a BMS at all. Now, one interesting recommendation is Vic Tron saying 14.2 volts for their Winston cells. Keep in mind those are different, they have a different electrolyte, and those batteries that they use for a Victron system are externally managed. But their balancing circuit is on the cells, and all the voltage sensing leads go out to the rest of the system so it can manage the pack externally. And in that system, you should be able to get full capacity, it just might take more time to reach it but you still need to charge to 100% so that you actually know that they're balanced. You can technically do it at 14.2 volts, but it happens faster at 14.5 volts. If you're using them for a solar system, you're not gonna be hanging out there for very long. So again, try to cycle up to 100% as much as you can. Now this does not mean keep it at 100% for all time. Like I said, if you put them into storage, keep them at 50%. Personally, on my property, because the only way I've actually killed batteries is from over discharging them from storage because I have so many of them, I leave them at 100%. And then I capacity test them and I do all sorts of things. And guess what? The degradation isn't that bad. It's over 120 degrees Fahrenheit outside over here. I leave them in a big pile. The batteries are getting rained on during the winter and I keep them at 100% state of charge and the degradation is not that bad. Even if it's shaded in this desert climate with my gate opener battery, we only recorded 4% degradation in the worst climate possible being held at 100% state of charge. It's not that bad. So again, don't be scared of it. The only way I actually see people killing these is because they're neglecting them and they're not charging them enough. So my recommendation still stands. Charge to 100%. Don't be scared to discharge to 0%, especially with how these batteries work and degrade over time. And if you're storing them, you need to check on them. That's it. Also, don't overthink it. The BMS does everything. As long as you keep it charged, it will do everything for you. You don't have to sit there and check the cell voltages every single day and get two or three active balancers on there and try to modify the cycling thresholds. Forget it. 
charge it to 100% and stop stressing about it. Now, if you're really worried about degradation, do a capacity test once a year and see what your battery is actually at. And you might be pleasantly surprised, especially if the batteries are being cycled inside with solar. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, please let me know down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.